The views and opinions during this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the sponsors or executive producers. This program contains conversation, discussion, debate, which a truly free society would neither fear nor suppress. However, in some socially inept areas, certain religious fanatics and ultra-sensitive and extreme political affiliates violate your First Amendment rights by attempting to control what you watch, listen to, write, and speak. We feel that this is unconstitutional and un-American. And now we present the MK Ultrasound Podcast. Live from Studio Diablo in Chicago, Illinois, this is MK Ultrasound. Get with the countdown. I speak jive. Forget it, man. Blast off for Kicksville. Shake this square world. Blast off for Kicksville. I speak jive. Forget it, man. Get with the countdown. I speak jive. Forget it, man. Blast off for Kicksville. Shake this square world. Blast off for Kicksville. I speak jive. Forget it, man. Summer's over. <laughs> Fuck. No, it's not. Where was oh, summer, man? man? No! It's fucking Labor Day weekend. and uh, had a crazy summer. <laughs> this is the first day I wore shorts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hello, hello, legs. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ty's back. Hello. hello. She's uh, on vacation, well rested. She decided she would wreck her car. <laughs> Not good. I was mad at that guy. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is this. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. I have the show that I've been wanting to do from the beginning. I've got... Two members of my favorite hard rock band currently, uh, Electric Revolution. Uh, Billy oh, and Leona yeah. 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 This is, um, you know, we've been talking about this even before I started it. Oh, yeah, man. And so I'm excited to have you on. And I, We're excited I to be here. Someone's up a little bit too loud. So, oh, that, okay, that's me. I think that's going to go down. We had a little bit of feedback there. <sighs> Fucking summer. We didn't have a summer, did we? It, we had like good. three, four hot days. Yeah. That was it. That's Wisconsin for you, boy. Just short summer. We got. Well, actually, we're bit. in Illinois here, but oh, yeah, we are the same thing. But you know what? But you guys Illinois. are real close. But that's the thing, though. Wisconsin is my favorite place to go camping and canoeing in the United States, and um, I didn't make it there yet. But get ready for this one. This is fucked up. What? What? The three of us. Yeah. All have the same birthday, December twelfth. Twelve twelve. That cannot be. <laughs> Are you <laughs> serious? Fucking believe this? Yeah. Twelve twelve. Twelve. Same day as um, Frank Sinatra, now. Bruce Kulick from Kiss. You said Dave Medicetti from YNT. Fucking. Wow. Um, I said Sinatra. Bruce Kulick. What about? Oh, oh yeah, it's the Pony's Aww. birthday. That Aww. our mascot, that uh, fluffy kitty a party. <laughs> Little pause. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, also, Flip Wilson. And we were talking on the porch. Um, Flip, Wilson. Flip Wilson was the first trainee comedian. Remember, he did Geraldine. I guess yeah. so. First trainee. Talk about a trend breaker, man. <laughs> <How about it? laughs> it was okay then, though. Yeah, I mean, it's, people look at it weird now, but Shakespeare you know? was doing it back when, so I wouldn't say he was like the first on TV. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> Milton Berle. Milton Berle did drag. Right. Yeah. Okay, That's true I'm too. fucking myself on That's this. That's all right. <laughs> Most of these people don't even know Flip who you're Wilson talking was about. Fucking awesome, though. <laughs> that was a great show. <laughs> Dude, remember that Thursday nights in the 70s. Oh, yeah. God, I just gave myself away. Oh, we had away. like six channels. <laughs> Three. Three where I grew up. Three or four. Three, with PBS yeah. made yeah. four, yeah. Ty, where did you grow up? Did you grow up in upstate New York? I'm a military brat, so I was in Maryland and then upstate New York. And You guys both natives of Wisconsin? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I grew up in the Ohio Valley, which I had had to put tinfoil on my antennas to watch like late night theater <laughs> horror movies to get a signal from Pittsburgh. But we had CBS and NBC and ABC was out of Pittsburgh. So we barely got that. Right. So I got to see the love boats and fantasy Island sometimes. Yeah. If yeah. you stood on one foot as, <laughs> but then when UHF came about with the round antenna, I remember you know, the that? thing about UHF was great. Was Monty Python was on UHF and that's the only thing I saw. Man. I saw tits. Yes. Yeah. Right. I, I didn't have Spangoli. All star wrestling. Right. No, we had, uh, Midwest, right. But Monty Python's Flying Circus, you got to see tits. Ah, yeah. that's <laughs> you right. <can> boobs. <laughs> well, that and that, uh, what was the uh, guy that used to pat the other little guy? Oh, Benny Hill. Hill. Benny Hill. Benny Hill. Yeah, oh, there was jugs on Benny Hill. Oh, delicious, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dad would watch that. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, just, I, I was more, more of an ass I man. I did, too. But, um, 
The only ass you saw in Monty Python was the naked guy playing the piano. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't really want to see that, but... No. Nah, it, it was still funny he was naked. I mean, as a kid, was like anything naked was like sure. dirty. Yeah, yeah, gross. Yeah. Like, oh. like fart jokes this. were like the greatest things when you were a kid. They still are. <laughs> fart they jokes. Still are. <laughs> Those <laughs> never get old. Kevin Smith has made one? a fucking career out of he fart has, jokes. He has. Yeah, tell the yeah, fart yeah. joke. Go ahead. Somebody. Yeah, who's got a good fart joke? <laughs> I don't have any offhand. Holy cow, none of us none do. Of us. But they are. <laughs> so uh, on on that topic, I um, I started a new role at my job this week, and my boss, um, who I found out listens to this show, so uh oh, uh oh, um, you're he's awesome. Hired. He's a <laughs> <laughs> the anti-Trump. You're hired. That's right. <laughs> but he brought up my Tourette's and um. I didn't think anybody heard it, oh. and and I was I actually talked to a couple of friends out. He's like, "Yeah, we hear shit, fuck shit," <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, yeah. you <laughs> found it." And uh, <laughs> we can say shit and fuck that we can't say other words like the R word <laughs> or the N word either. <laughs> but um, but no, my so he's like, and I I I felt myself the blood go to my face. I felt the embarrassment. I felt, I'm like. I mean, this is so embarrassing, but I was laughing, nervous so you laughter. you have Tourette's? I do. But oh. then I, I, I talked to some friends. I'm like, oh, talk to Max Bravo. And I'm like, yeah, good thing he doesn't hear me talk in my sleep. And he's like, <laughs> there are people who will not stay in a hotel room with me. And like, when I'm camping, they hear me like Tourette's in, in my tent. And I'm like, we're going to record you. I'm like, you record me, I will fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's only... You Only must real. have a mild case of Tourette's because it you don't just be, sit yeah. there well, and like, worse when you're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, you when I used to work downtown <laughs> and I'm like behind like two really fat people walking down a sidewalk waddling and I'm trying to get around them in my head, I'm like, God, I'm so glad people can't read my mind. I'm like, move, 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 you motherfucking fucking move. <laughs> like, I want to go from point A to point B and back into my office right away. Get out of my way. I want to get a fucking sandwich and go back to my office. Right. I don't actually take breaks. <laughs> so, yeah, I got caught out on my Tourette's. And they moved me across the office. <laughs> oh, my God. To a quieter In the little... back room. Yeah. You're well, I like it there. In the like, you're not a now. child at school. <laughs> so, I didn't know, like, do I get a note from my doctor about my Tourette's? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, Daniel, man. if you're listening, uh, y- yes, I, I do have Tourette's. It's not, um, I'm not that blatantly fucking rude <laughs> unless I'm behind a microphone. And, we, and, and at <laughs> work, we all be. put our work face on and our work voice on and everything gets... I don't know, man. Where I work is so chill. It's yeah. so relaxed. It's like, I'm, I'm used to a corporate environment. We wear a tie every day and it's sure. so... I can wear shorts. They see my human centipede tattoo. Oh <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> nothing can get you fired then. I mean, there's nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I still like what people are like, like I'm crossing the street when they this this bro in his ball cap on backwards. He's like, "Is that a human centipede tattoo?" I'm like, "No, it's a love boat tattoo." <laughs> <laughs> There's no mistaking what this tattoo is. It's, you know exactly what it is. And I get that compliment. I get the Devo. I got a Devo tattoo. I get compliments on that. No, rarely skinny puppy tattoo. Huge skinny puppy tattoo. Rarely do I get that because I don't hang out with those people anymore. Right. Right. <laughs> Oh, there are going to be a lot of those people in town this month because cold waves. Yeah. And we're going to have uh, Jared from Chem Lab in and Reed Himes is coming back. Uh, hopefully, yeah. get uh, Curse Mackey and Rona Roughheart in. It'll be great. But on the yeah, topic exactly. of music, this week was MTV's Video Music Awards. Snooze. <laughs> what? Did anybody watch? That's kind of <laughs> fucked up for a channel that doesn't show videos. Is yeah, music is even, even they part don't. of it? That's all Are they even on television? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the last thing that anybody remembers from the VMAs was when Kanye went up and uh-huh. interrupted. Yeah, and said Beyonce should have got that award. Yeah, yeah. Right. Taylor Swift. But yeah. back in the old days, they had rock. Yeah, you, man. They had Chili Peppers, White Zombie, White Metallica, Zombie, yeah. East, Kiss, know, Metallica. Sure. There is no rock Food music fighters. represented at all, at no, all. Not anymore. None. And the bands they talk about is like some fucking local. Fallout Boy, what the fuck yeah. is that? Yeah, yeah, they were. Not, did you feel like they were from here? I never did. You know that. Here's I felt the funny like they're story. They're an LA band. Yeah, they didn't feel. You know, Chicago Ty, Ty was in ministry. In the year that I had to had to represent um, ministry at the the Grammys was when Fallout Boy won the award. And ministry was 
nominated in, in best metal. Right. They're not fucking metal. Not even. <laughs> it's like Jethro Tull won that. Yeah, it's yeah. Oh, yeah. Category. Tull thing, right? We all remember that, that one, a, right? Just yeah. a travesty. So, word. yeah, it's just. <laughs> fuck. So, what, yeah. Why? Why? Why even have an award show? And I, I, really I, I was asking it. Cassie, I'm like, what? And they're like, people watch on YouTube. Well, YouTube should have a video music award Absolutely. show. Absolutely. That'd be better. Yeah, it would. Yeah. And Pornhub should too. I think Pornhub does. Better. I haven't been oh, invited yeah. yet. Way better. Everybody be watching that. Aja Akira. <laughs> and in this category. <laughs> <and in> the <laughs> we could go on so and on. So many oh, categories. Yeah. I haven't, show, I haven't so shown them, the, I haven't shown so them the secret long. room yet either. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't seen the room, the back room. Oh. The room. The secret room? Oh, yeah. You have to do certain yeah, things. Yeah, it must be 18 to enter. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like fun. No, no, I, uh, yeah, it could be. Again, like it's not sticky in there either. <laughs> so, um, I love talking about this guy or th this thing, this alligator. Yeah. And uh -huh. our humble bark thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the guy got a girlfriend. I know. Frank Rob. He's getting it, late. First he me. caught the gator, then he got the girl. <laughs> <laughs> and he, it, it, they ask him about it on the news. He says, "I reckon you can call her that." <laughs> oh, <laughs> reckon. I reckon. Yeah, He's things are still Billy. fairly new, so he didn't want to share too much. Pretty I'd, I'd go right now. Like, does she do anal? No! <laughs> <laughs> we're sharing now. If we're sharing. Wow. So the uh, the alligator hunt cost Chicago more than thirty three thousand dollars. That's more than uh, Jesse Small <laughs> <laughs> to, get, to get you thinking it was in a lake. It, not oh, even man. Of it. So somebody released an alligator in some pond uh, or something. It was fucking awesome. Yeah, in in. And Humboldt Park. Yeah. No it, shit. It is a pond, basically. Yeah. But it Small is, lake. Yeah. Um, that's a beautiful park, by the way. The Humboldt Park is... It really it, is. I'm it's sorry, like our central park. There's basically. a lot of gang activity there, but it's a gorgeous not fucking anymore. park. Not anymore. It used to be, but not so much anymore. It's more central parky now. They cleaned it up a lot and... Very family oriented, a lot of ball games. Well, and it's just miles long. They are, yeah, it is. Many, many parts. I used to it. play um, kickball up there. Yeah, the kickball league. But oh, yeah, it's, it's, lots it's, of bike dude, paths. Dude, the park is gorgeous. It's just so pretty. But it's also the Puerto Rican neighborhood, which yeah. is like which I like. Really nice. They in set up summer. their their hot, girls. cool rods and cars and just show them off. Every weekend, and short shorts. Uh, very proud, you know. Very cool. She's like Fit, dancing around. Lots this. of visual, <laughs> cool stuff to look at for sure. I used to live there for like food, two years. So. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, I love their food. Cuban oh. food, oh, Cuban food, Mexican yeah. food. Sure. Yeah, that's all good stuff, God man. Bless the other man. thing uh, this week. Um, so Joe Walsh, that nutcase um, conservative radio guy that used to be in Congress here in Illinois for one term, he's uh, challenging Trump as the Republican um, Party's presidential um, candidate. I thought you were talking about Joe Walsh. Joe right. Walsh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd vote for him. him baby. I'd you vote for him that, in a minute. You really thought that's where I was going with this? Totally, man. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the I Eagles. would vote for Hat, motherfucker, I would. man. <laughs> yeah, that's my vote. Uh, the clown yeah. prince of rock and roll, Joe right. fucking Walsh. Did you know that Joe Walsh used to live over the Liars Club? That is true. Really? This Joe, Joe Walsh, Walsh gang, man. Oh, that was some good shit. No. Yes. yes, I swear to you. I swear to you. Isn't that just bizarre? In the uh, 80s, I believe. Way before they were there, you know he, he used to. He lived in that. Okay, when he had the James Gang in Ohio, yeah, that was so good. He used to jam, jam with Devo, like, and so did wow. Neil Young. Nobody knows that Neil Young, Russ never sleeps, came from Devo. Christy, oh, uh, wow. uh, really? uh, Christy Hind, Christy Hind was supposed to sing for him. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, Joe Walsh, he's a, he has a nut job. I was talking to Bob Hoax and my again, my good friend uh, Bob. <sighs> Fuck, I just brain farted. There's a fart joke. <laughs> <laughs> new, new bomb Turk, as I refer to him. And photographer in a wheelchair um, sent me a picture. They have a Barbie doll, like teen Barbie high school photographer in a wheelchair. He's like, when is it going to stop? <laughs> I'm like, you should sue him. They should put Ken in a wheelchair. Like, hey, they're, they're not talking about the guys. They're being sexist now. Totally, but uh, so this Joe Walsh, Bob said he's a nutcase. He is, but I'd like he's anti-Trump, and to have a Republican with the balls to be anti-Trump is ballsy. Mm, so totally, it is. I I I, I like God bless I like him. listening to him because he's got a temper, but uh, yeah, he's a nutcase. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, I you know you, you got to give it to him. So basically, here's what happened: the Salem Network canceled his show, so he's still on locally for like thirty days, and they're going to axe him because. 
Trump, you know, Salem Network supports Trump. If you're anti-Trump, you're out. So right, he's right. he's off the air. He's losing his job because he's outspoken against this president. Which brings me to this point. My favorite talk show host was Michael Medved. He's a Jewish conservative guy, but he was anti-Trump. I used to listen to, to him at night. He was the smartest guy I've ever heard on radio. I just loved this guy. He was conservative. You know, it wasn't... You know, he, he didn't do vulgar like I like. He didn't do fart jokes. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do fart jokes or anal. That's a kind of a fart thing, right? Um, but they... Hand they hand. January um, 1st, I tune in. He's, he's not on. They put this other guy on. They, they replaced... Michael Medved, because he was outspoken against Trump with this guy, Sebastian, uh, I've got his name here somewhere, but uh, this guy was uh, worked on Trump's cabinet. Mm -hmm. And they gave him, the guy has no, no former training, experience, radio experience yeah. in radio at all. They give him a job, he's, he's a Trump buddy. So basically, you're fired. He's still doing the fucking show. Right, right, so, right, right. If Trump doesn't like what you do, he just fucking... Fires yeah, you. Get rid right. of him, man. So, and uh, I've got some exciting new stuff to talk about politics in a little bit after the next break. But Ty, um, you brought something to the yeah, table today. Um, you know, speaking of uh, our politicians, Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota and Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut, both senators, both Democrats, say that uh, Live Nation's dominance in the industry is unchallenged. So uh, senators are asking for antitrust probe in their concert ticketing. Um, they uh, they asked the Justice Department to investigate the state uh, of competition in the ticketing business and to extend a regulatory agreement with Live Nation. Um, Live Nation owns like 500 artists. I mean, they 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 ticket the world over. Yeah. And when they merged with Ticketmaster in 2010, it became such a just a huge monopoly, a monolith that, you know, it's hard for the government to control. They don't have the means nor the expertise to really know. And then, so uh, the, the way Live Nation's getting around this stuff is they're bundling, you know, things so that it, it, it gets around the legalese in these contracts. Do you know I found but, out? But big, big government's trying to get in there and They sell um, ticket insurance now. Oh, yeah. That's fucking bullshit. Yeah, yeah my son, <laughs> my son had tickets to a, a concert last night. Got canceled. He's out two hundred and ninety bucks because he didn't buy ticket insurance. Yeah, no shit. that's crazy. This is no what a scam. And things like Ticketmaster that. and Live Nation. Fuck them. Well, so now the government wants in on yeah, it. Yeah, well, they they merged together. So Live Nation is saying that that isn't fair to other competitors. You guys are just too big. I'd, and uh, they've been eight years at it with this merger, and now it's coming sort of to an end. So you think this is a good thing? Uh, I think I think so. Although ultimately, government really shouldn't, you know, probably yeah. get involved in business. So we're going back to Ayn Rand and and uh, you uh -huh. know, all sorts of uh, yeah deeper discussions. But um, you know, they're saying that Live Nation actually bullies um, you know these venues to uh, use Ticketmaster. Otherwise, they're not going to well, give do. them certain shows. You know, House of Blues. And that's how they do it. My favorite. And they do venue. it without saying anything. It's just implied. But also, there there are some implications that they have bullied people. <laughs> Remember how cool it was the Foundation Room at the House of Blues? Yes. And you had to be a VIP that's or right. pay high dollar to get high in there. High dollars, right? And then you had access to these boxes and good seats. Now, Live Nation. If you buy a ticket to see the Cult, seventy nine bucks, okay. But if you want to. And you go to Foundation Room where you pay extremely Couple high, hundred. Yeah, pay least. a lot of money for for food or alcohol. Probably then you got to pay another fifty bucks to sit. Right, it used to be free. Right, it's fucking bullshit. Yeah, it's all about it's the getting dollar. Out of, it's getting out of. It's kind of like now. the meet and greet thing that all these fucking bands do. I think is uh, well, that's how they're bundling. I mean? When they're bundling yeah, with the meet and yeah. greet, and they bundle with the parking or or the food. See, I get drink. bands that need it because three hundred dollars later. Yeah, there's no um. There's no label support anymore, so bands don't get that tour support like they used to. So right. I get a band like LA Guns that has to do it. But when you're Kiss or Bon Jovi, fuck. Oh, I'm sorry. You need more money, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, no. it's like yeah. Y and T. Like Dave Menachetti refuses to do any meet and greets, man. You know what I mean? Which is super cool. So when they get done playing, they come out and they talk to everybody, and they're hanging out. And, you know, like you guys, just like yeah. I would man. like you to meet and greet do. me, but not for two grand. Yeah, not man. Two hundred. Like totally against it. that. So yeah, we're gonna take a right. quick break. We'll be right back. You're listening to the MK Ultra Sound podcast. Please feel free to contact us at podcast at mkultramagazine dot com. <laughs> oh, man. So 
What else? What, yeah, what? we had a straight pride parade in Boston, okay? It, it, uh, <laughs> there were more people that protested the straight pride parade than were in it. Uh, even the Boston mayor said, uh, you know, why don't you just enjoy the weekend, people, and go to, like, some some block parties, some barbecues, and, uh, yeah. He yeah, the Irish it. in Boston don't drink much. <laughs> 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 They're probably too drunk to march. <laughs> <laughs> they had a lot of uh, protesters. Uh, people from and, uh, and the, 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 the parade was brought to you by the Super Happy Fun America. Which says that sounds gay. It, it advocates. <laughs> <laughs> they ha- they advocate on behalf of the straight community in order to build respect, and that's it. Not what it. <laughs> not You're who fired. It. That's it. <laughs> Super happy fun America. <laughs> that's a good one. So gay. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty gay. <laughs> You know, back back in the day, you'd say gay when something was weak. Absolutely. I yeah. remember when I was a kid, you couldn't say queer, and now now the gay people own the word queer. Yeah, it, it's. It's awesome how that comes up. But I remember when when I was a kid, we played this football game called Smear the Queer. My mom would like make us not say that because we had a gay uncle. And um, well, gay was a word everybody used back then, anyways. Like sure. it's everything's so gay. Yeah, yeah. a gay. You know, lame, like the, the 80s, it was, yeah, if it's lame, like South Park, it's like, oh, that's gay, it's lame. It wasn't a slur against right. anybody. No, I still use it as meaning lame. <clears throat> so I gotta, talk, I gotta bring this up because um, <laughs> we have a. I'm gonna plug the hell out of this woman, <laughs> not physically. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that camera? <laughs> wow, this is going way better than I expected. <laughs> um, Tulsi Gabbard, I was unaware of this woman running for president until this week, and this conservative comedian, Nick DiPaolo, who I only know through Howard Stern. Oh, I've seen him on uh, Comedy Central. He's a sure. little pretty. He's a little full of himself. But, yeah. I mean, he's but, coming yeah. in. I still got to like him. He's funny, though, yeah. man. Yeah, he, he's funny, funny. But, but he's also, like, misogynistic. A little bit, yeah. yeah. He's got the Italian thing going. Yeah. Like, that's like, just, like, like, hey, dice, like yeah, dice for what's real. What's going to be, gay? Those guys are trouble. <laughs> What are you, a homo? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, he got on my radar this week because um, he called out. He called on um, this this candidate uh, running for president, Tulsi Gabbard from Hawaii. She's thirty seven. She surfs. She's in the hey, military. Cool. She joined military after. Is she um, gay? <laughs> not yet. She's married. <laughs> no, she's Samoan by birth, but married nice. married an Indian guy, so she's Hindu. She's oh, okay. badass, and she's the only one running on policy um, rather than identity or, like, everybody else is, like, they they are beat Trump. They're not talking about the policy. Right on, man. What's this person? They, all they want to do is beat Trump. Yeah. So she called out Kamala Harris on the debates and called her out, and Kamala Harris was speechless. That's when I got into this woman, and now I'm endorsing her. I haven't endorsed a presidential candidate since – like 2000, whatever, when I endorsed, and by a mistake, the Green Party candidate, uh, Ralph Nader, who was, who was great, but wasn't presidential material. Right. And I introduced Jello, Jello Biafra, on stage that day. Uh-huh. And Patty Smith played. And um, But Nader's. Wow. I, I, when I saw the audience, I'm like, oh, these are just a bunch of fucking slacker hip, hippies <laughs> who don't want to work and smoke pot. Yeah. So, you know, I, I supported the Democrats. Until the last election, when I went libertarian, this woman, the right loves her, the libertarians love her, mm-hmm. the Democratic Party hates her. She's blocked for the next debates. No, no shit, huh? Yeah, because they're not recognizing all the polls that she's she rates in, and she's fantastic. So if you, um, it's at TulsiGabbard.org if you want to learn more about her. I ordered a sign, put it in my window. I've got bumper stickers coming. I don't even have a car. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, she's, she's uh, totally my choice. So we're going to give her this plug and we'll be right back. We have a choice. The tired old politics of sweetheart deals, trading favors for campaign contributions, endless war, Wall Street bailouts, or a fresh approach and someone we can be proud of. Tulsi Gabbard. I'm Tulsi Gabbard. I approve this message. I'll work to end tax loopholes, end the war in Afghanistan now, protect Medicare and Social Security, and work hard to make you proud as your Congresswoman. And I'll always fight for you. 
All right, I did my community service. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, somebody already posted on Facebook asked me if she was a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you expect? Uh, one that, one day there will votes. be a porn star as a politician. You yep. best and she'll believe get votes it. because she, of it. guaranteed. <laughs> when will that happen? I want that to I happen. I remember like soon, I hope. Remember back in the seventies, <laughs> weren't there like t shirts that said Leonard Lovelace for president? I think there was I back in back probably. in the day. Yeah. That was huge. I think there was in Italy that lady was a porn star who Oh was yeah, star. that's yeah. right. In the that. government in Italy, yeah. Yeah. People are like posting so like head over there, man. What's up? With people that? are like <laughs> sending posts like coming to the barbecue. We're having a barbecue today, by the way. But um, so I I found this band with Cassie a couple of years ago, um, opening for Angel, and uh, it was at Reggie's Rock Club. And I'm a huge, huge fucking Angel fan. Like I have all the vinyl. I I fucking love them. And I almost got an Angel tattoo, but I was 17. They wouldn't do it mm. in West Virginia. As <laughs> as backwards as that place is, they wouldn't tattoo me because I was seventeen. Is that, is that where you're originally from, or something, or from from the area? Yeah, I'm from Ohio, but nineteen miles east of the West Virginia border, the High River. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I went to, my first year of college. I went to um, West Virginia, West Virginia Northern Community College before I transferred to Pitt. So I'm um, with Cassie and Adam Beckvar, I think, was with us, and there's this glowing guitar. And it turns out it belongs to this great guitarist who, for some reason, didn't show up for this show. And I praise him, Brock Betts, guitar player for this band, who uh, the drummer and bass player with us today. We have Billy and Leon. Guys, thanks for coming in. Wow. Happy to be here. You play really good rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. That that shit that people don't play anymore. Don't say, I mean... You're on my radar because of that. You're that good. I appreciate that. Thanks. And when I when I got Nick Huffman to book you for my birthday party last year, oh, this is even better. Awesome. Both these guys have the same birthday as me. 12 yeah. 12. Sagittarius. <laughs> that is fucking yep. insane. That is ironically right, weird. Do you remember that we, a couple of years ago we we had 12 12 12? Uh-huh. It's yep. the last time that's ever going to happen. Yep. yep. Right. And the year before, I was like in love with this girl in Baton Rouge. Her birthday was 11 11 11. <laughs> Oh, wow. It's a Scorpio. Oh, crazy, man. Yeah, that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been so Shocker. cool, though. Yeah, I know, right? But uh, 12, 12, so, but, uh, Billy, tell us tell us about the history of the band, because you're actually the founding member, right? Of Electric, yeah, Electric actually, Revolution from Kenosha, Wisconsin. Right, right. Uh, 2014, man. Um, I didn't play music for a while, so, you know, I wanted to start something, and uh, I put together a little power trio, actually, and I was originally the vocalist and drummer. So I was singing and playing drums at the same time, obviously. And then uh, we ended up getting Dave, which I used to work with Dave back in back in the day. You know what I mean? And uh, it just became too much for me, basically, to sing and play at the same time. Yeah. You got it. Figured, you know, but I wanted somebody with that bluesy, old school, bluesy, you know, yeah. raspy rock and roll voice, man. You know yeah. what I mean? The blues based kind of vocal style, basically. So I called Dave and he came aboard, man. Was he... Does he have a history as being a front man? Yeah, yeah. We go back years, man. I mean, uh, we were in bands together in Kenosha, you know, and then he did his own thing. He went on his, some cover band thing for a while, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so, you know. Um, but uh, I got him to, to come on board, man. You he's know? a good singer. Yeah, he's, he's a great, great vocalist. Singer. When I when Nick Huffman asked me, to, he's like, what do they sound like? All I can think of, and I hope this is a compliment, was Van Halen album Fair Warning. Yeah. That's what Electric Revolution sounds like to me, which is a great album. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that whole thing, it's, you know, that old school <clears throat> rock and roll thing, the bluesy thing, you know. Um, there's a lot of bands people say we sound like the Winery Dogs, too, you know. Okay. People Montrose. have said that. And the old school Montreal stuff, man. <laughs> Not a bad you know? thing at all. No, you know, it just goes back to that whole thing, you know. Van Halen's first show outside of California was up the street at the Aragon Theater opening for Montrose. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's all connected, too. You know, Y&T, Montrose, Van Halen, that all comes from that same area, the San Francisco area. You know? Gotcha. Well, not only Testament. <laughs> yeah. And Well, they're even Metallica. on that whole, did you ever see that video about the, uh, area. the, yep, uh, area. the tra- uh, thrash video thing they got no. coming out? You know, where it all started from the San Francisco Bay. Okay. Hard, right. Heavy metal thing, yeah. you know. But all those <laughs> bands are... Actually, in, on that video. The region of the country the where you guys are from, um, extremely 
well talented musicians come from up the Milwaukee, Kenosha, um, even the uh, Madison area. Fantastic talent. Like I've, I, that's yeah. where Smart Studios was. Bunch of big garbage. Sure, did that album. Did Never Mind in Madison, Wisconsin. Yep. Did um, yep. he did every Smashy Pumpkins. Sure, yeah. So I mean, what is it? Do you guys just bored or? get into music or no i've always because the western journey they're 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 fucking their cousins (laughs) i was always a drummer man i always played music so you know it's all it's in my blood i guess you could say something i've always done and uh ever since i was a kid you know i was a weird kid that walked into school with Jimi hendrix records you know when other kids had the partridge family you know what i mean so okay (laughs) it's just playing man yeah i was like that i grew up in a country didn't have any access to anything but you know who did come from where i grew up Wild Cherry, who did play that funky music. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's okay. like the only talent that really came up from our area. <laughs> that's good, though. Yeah, yeah. Where'd you find this guy? So Leon's the new guy. Yep, I'm the new guy. Uh, I haven't seen you live yet, but your your stage presence and photos are just fucking awesome. He is awesome, You look man. like a fit. Yeah, he's, he's, I mean, fantastic. You know, we're like super, super stoked having this guy in the band, you know? Leon, I mean, what's your background, man? I've been in a, a lot of bands. I went into California for a little while, spent some time out in Hollywood. Okay. Then I came back here because I was I was born out in this area. So, and uh, so been in some cover bands around the Milwaukee area. And but my heart and soul is the blues. Okay. You know, and I came across this guy. He came looking for me. And he came found me. Almost stalkerish kind. I was on a mission. I was on a mission, man, I'm to sure find the yeah, guy. You, you know, well, you're a I mean? businessman, so he knew so, everything yeah. about me. I mean, he knew <laughs> what bands I was in, how I played, the style I played, how I dressed. That wow. I played guitar for a little bit. He knew that. He knew every, all the bands that I was in. So I was on a mission. So I went on a total scope out on Facebook and looked at all my friends' Facebook pages and their friends and you know, skim through their friends list and, oh, there's a bass player, there's a bass player. Then all of a sudden I saw his photos and I was like, whoa, who's this fucking guy, man? Yeah, you look like You know like what a I mean? He's fit, the guy, you know, so I, I reached out to a friend that actually was doing a show with him the same night that uh, he got uh, asked, I guess, you know, my friend asked him if he wanted to check us out or whatever. But, uh, yeah, man, it worked out great, you know. Um, but as soon as I saw his photos and it's kind of like, intrigued me and who's this mother what do you think you think you he know? was gay and a cool thing too it's I like was worried for a minute because you know it's like oh okay you know everything about me maybe I'm like, okay. <laughs> do you always play you shirtless like that oh not always but <laughs> yeah i was it like happens. it gets hot up there it does yeah <laughs> Yeah, another bass player. Yeah. There are three oh. bass players you here. You play shirtless too? Sweet. <laughs> 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 you got a bass Easily. player over there too. <laughs> little bra. That's a win. That's all I need. <laughs> so uh, what's this uh, first song we're going to play, man? Um, you sent me two songs. Uh, Killing Me. Yeah, and uh, is that on the new act? That's character? off the album Character is Power. It's the one before Burn It Down, actually. All right, so we're going to listen to this. Um you have pictures we can run on the YouTube show, and we're going to be right back after this tune. And we can all go pee and fart and stuff like that. The scientists gave the monster eternal life by shooting it full of electricity. Some people claim it is not dead even now, uh-huh. just dormant. <laughs> now, who'd be silly enough to believe that? <laughs> <laughs> Who would be silly enough to believe that? (laughs) (laughs) Me.
Now that's a voice. Wow. Get Dave man. Lawson. Yeah. He sounds like David Coverdale meets Lane Staley. Yeah, or something. well, yeah. That's totally. A- Wow. He yeah. decided what he's going to ride Harleys today rather than come down here. And, and everybody he else, Harley. man. It's just a miscommunication <laughs> thing, you know, a misunderstanding, basically. So, Are you playing on this, too, the, the new guy? No. Not that, not that song. Not that song, no. but wow, is that really sounds so good. Yeah, thanks. Where'd you record it? Did you record it in Bell this? City Sound uh, in Racine, Wisconsin. Man, yeah. Same place we did the, uh, the last album, too. It's yeah, our home, man. That. Home away from home. So, yeah. You know, I've played you more than any other band on this show. That's I awesome. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you. <laughs> My first show, we played down. Like, like Cookie Jar. God, I love it. Oh, song. that's a great that's song. That's a boogie woogie song. I bet yeah. you have a blast playing on that. Oh, I do. I love playing that song. It's great being on the other side of the stage with Brock. I mean, you have to be able to have a good presence with that guy. I yeah, mean, he's got his own. Yeah, he does. He's, he's in his own zone. He's yeah. got a lot of Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix. Steve Vai. Steve Vai, yeah. right? Joe Satriani. He's got a lot That's of that it. to him. When he's playing, all that comes out. And he's younger than us, you know? So it's like, wow, where does that come from? It's got to come just from the soul. Very yeah. gifted. He's a gifted player, he's, man. Really How many shows have you done now with these guys? Um, we did. I did about six in a row. <laughs> Bam, yeah, July right was uh, pretty solid, actually. And he did his homework, man. You know, uh, right at the end of June, basically, he just did his homework and came in, and we just started going. We got to do another Looney Bin gig. Let's do it. Uh, I'm surprised Nick. he didn't put us on that one with. Uh, he got a Pink Stink Girls play too. With uh, oh yeah, oh. actually, T's brought in uh, Marco Mendoza. That's what's going on with this whole thing. There was. And Tease is actually playing with Marco Mendoza at the Looney Bin, and we're playing the day after. See, I like it. Like, like I had a blast on my birthday. Don't get me wrong, but um, I like when you play earlier so we can hang out. Oh you yeah, I mean, man, that's always fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you, you, I mean, you're you're definitely headline material, but I like to be able to hang out with my friends before I get trashed. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you can remember it, maybe. <laughs> the hotel room was quite the experience, also. After. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> well, we stayed at, you came in there with that bottle of whiskey. You are like, come on, let's party. Yeah, dude, oh, I man, I missed that one. Brock. Man. Yeah. Next one, it's on. Yeah, dude. Oh, this December is going to be, uh, it's going to be trouble. Well, here's here's my plan for December. <laughs> nice. I'm, I want to spend um, my birthday in New Glarus again. And I was telling Billy yesterday when he briefed me that your birthday was the same as, as ours. I'm like, you guys should come there because there's some cool bars and there's Great fucking food. I mean, all they do is eat and drink there. And there's a great beer scene there. What, what comes from New Glarus? Oh, New Glarus Brewery. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's right there. Yeah. We, we all I've definitely have to beer. get it's together. Great. Since we oh, have yeah, the we same have, birthday, we, we have, have to We party should book together. a gig there. We have to. Got to do it. Got to. I got a place for you to play. So all right. It's let's, on. Let's put in for it. Um, yeah. Book it. Winston and Grace. I'm not really familiar with that what city. Where is that? <laughs> <laughs> New Glarus. It's just south of Madison. New Glarus, where they make oh, the yeah, beer. Sure. It's like, sure. It's oh, the, okay. It was the very first Swiss settlement in America ever. Okay. And it's all like like Austrian, German, and Swiss. And there are natives there, too, that, that have the accents. So it's, it's a wonderful place. And I've, I've made a lot of friends there over the years. It's my favorite place. I s- celebrated my 50th birthday there. Okay. But I made the mistake of taking a, a Dutch native with me. She was very jealous. <laughs> Why? <laughs> jealous. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so this new album has been out for about um, nine months, right? January 1st, we put okay. it out. Yep. So yeah, I'm, I'm right on it. Yeah, nine months. And um, you got some traction. That's available on CD, baby? How CD, do, baby. Get... It's, a, it's all over, man. It's all, Spotify, you know. Spotify, iTunes, all the, uh, yep. everywhere. All the streaming I, uh, platforms. A, my friend in Columbus, Ohio, Ed Kowalski. He it, loves us, man. Yeah. Yeah. I used to go, that guy was my, like, concert buddy in the 80s. I'd okay. go, we saw the cult together, everybody. We, except for the two bands we were into at the time. He's a, he's such a Def Leppard fan, I used to call him Ed Leppard. <laughs> 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 I don't That's really, hardcore. I don't like Def Leppard much. I like the, the, like the first album. The first really two, good. On yeah. Through the yeah. Night and uh, High and Dry. Yeah. yeah. But then when they got with um, the, the man with the, the, the golden touch. Yeah, the um, Pyromania stuff. Mutt Lang. Was, Mutt yeah, Lang. it was so like, it's such a, a studio album. There's Versh, so many layers yeah. of guitars on it. You can't do that live. Yeah, it's not, it's, uh, you could totally tell it's conceived, you know, in the studio. Yeah. And that's the thing though, you know, you got to understand that's what like really skyrocketed the band. That's oh, right. huge. But you know what? It's because the masses are asses. <laughs> you know, and that's that's the reason why. You know, a lot I'd rather of people stay were wrong true. in Germany about fifty years ago. You know, um, speaking yeah, of, of uh, rock, I just watched finally 
I don't know if you guys have seen it, that Joan Jett documentary. Have you seen that? Bad Reputation? I have not. No. Oh, no, I haven't seen that. It's fantastic. I watched one in the uh, New York Dolls one, man. It's really good. Awesome. I love the dolls. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. It's like, uh, I don't know the person's name, but they follow follow them around like you know for like months, man, on tour and with a camera and just filmed every fucking thing. Nice. The nice it's thing really about the cool. Joan Jett one is Kim Fowley's in it. Wow. And, uh, we got to see any, it. Anything with Kim in it. I'm, I was reading Cherie Curry's book because I like... I was friends with Kim Fowley before he passed. The guy that that um, Launched invented the Runaways. The runaways. Yeah. He co-wrote Cherry Bomb with Joan Jett. Mm-hmm. He also wrote um, that guy's King, of the, King of the Nighttime World and um, Do You Love Me for Kiss okay. on Destroyer. Yeah, he's a huge guy. I met him in L.A. Um, my only trip, I'm, I went to Hollywood and just struck up a great friendship with the fucking guy. Yeah. He's such a weirdo. <laughs> and I miss him. Those and, are the you know, coolest people. And then the no, guy, no, he's totally weird. He, he's and a then, pervert. Uh, ironically, Michael Shannon, who is the actor from Chicago, plays him in that uh, Yes, Runaways in the Runaways movie. movie. You know, Kim told me, he said, Michael Shannon is Kim Fowley. He nailed yeah. it. Like, people were like, I wonder, was was Fowley offended by the portrayal? He's like, Fowley loved it. He's like, he nailed him. He, he was Beautiful. shameless as a pervert. Yeah, he's a total boy. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen well, the dirt? You what do you think of it? <laughs> um, I love the book. I, I'm not a huge crew fan, but I think um, the dirt is the best rock and roll book ever written. It really tells about the dirt. Yeah, I didn't like it at first, but the movie. Um, it, again, you asked me about the Doors movie. The same thing. It's like you, when you're so into Jim Morrison, they leave out so much, but you can only do so much in 90 minutes. Totally. I thought the movie was. The the good thing about the movie was I think that it turned a lot of younger people onto Motley Crue, mm-hmm. which people who don't it's get rock and idea. roll anymore. So yeah, it was a good thing for them. Boosted record sales for them. Oh, sure. totally yeah, sure. good for them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I seen some footage of uh, Vince Neil just played here not so long ago. Oh my god, god man, it was so guy. so bad. It's like he was speaking in tongues or you gotta, something. You gotta it wasn't walk. even. Oh like, yeah, you couldn't even. It, yeah, can't man, make you couldn't even words. understand him. My heart was like. Oh. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it's <laughs> unreal, man. Unbelievable. I mean, okay, like, put his put his physique aside. That's right. that's a note for We're story. Not even hey, fuck that. that, right? Because he's been through some shit. Oh yeah, sure. and but, but there's no excuse for the vocal performance. On, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. He was never he, really a great vocalist to no. begin with, but he, you know, it was more built on hype the whole band and everything. Because when it came out, it was right after punk band. Yeah, you know what I mean. And all of a sudden, this whole thing—it was like kind of like. The second coming you of think Kiss, of the movie? right? I thought it was the first. I don't know. I thought it was really cheesy when I first saw it, yeah. you know. But I watched it like another time, and I, it was actually better the second time, you know. But at first, it was like, yeah, you know. And everybody's, oh, it's fucking great, you know. Everybody's talking about how good it was, and I thought, yeah, it was yeah. okay, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? They had the behind the scenes. It was kind of corny at first, you know. Better. I like yeah. the uh, the audition scene. In the house when they brought Vince in and the girl, his rich yeah. girlfriend. I like that scene oh, yeah, a lot. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> Molly Crew did have the fuck you attitude yeah. <laughs> for rock bands. So we've got another song. Uh, which uh, this song, Surrender, is it from the new record? That is from the new album, Burn It Down. Yes, it is. Okay, and can we play it now? Hit it, brother. All right, and we're going to go pee and fart and stuff like that right now. So this Bass. is uh, this is the band that I love. Let your revolution surrender.
Electric Revolution on the MK Ultra Sound podcast. These yeah. guys, um, oh, I'm wearing a slut yeah. hat, and I'm going to explain why in a You're minute. You're a slut. Yeah. Slut. I Labeled. wish. I Labeled. Wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys played a huge festival this summer. Yeah, rock festival rock in fest- Kadat. Kadat, Wisconsin. I guess that's how you pronounce it, Kadat or okay. Kadat. Kadat. You were on there with some big fucking names. Big names. Yeah, like man. Who? Well, who? they had different stages. Marilyn Manson played. Uh, Rob Zombie. Zombie. Uh, Ice Nine Lacuna Kills. Coyle played. Who else was there? We got to see a lot of good bands there. Yeah, It was more That's so that right it was there. actually dubbed, I would dub it Mudfest. Oh, because yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Because the night before, like there was an actual, uh, they say a tornado, I guess. It was that bad as far as the weather goes. And a it human tornado? Dumped fucking... <laughs> Tons of fucking rain, man, and the place turned into a mud pit where people were just like running and sliding on their bellies. And <laughs> I hate that part. Yeah, yeah, it was horrible, man. Yeah, we, we were know? talking, See, Cassie. This moment. You can appreciate this, but we're old enough that once upon a time, you could go to festivals and bring a cooler with your booze and your food. Yeah, and just make yeah, and put a blanket out, and yeah. Now you can't even take a bottle of water in. No, water's <laughs> like five gotta, bucks a bottle. You have to buy it all inside now. <laughs> What else did you play this summer? You played with some... Oh, we, Jackal. That, that was a while ago, though, right? That was a while ago. Uh, let's see. What did we do? We did a bunch of outdoor stuff. We did the uh, Taste of Wisconsin Festival in Kenosha, which was awesome. That was a really good show. Um, That's great. Yeah. Played well, at the band show. Yeah, there was a band show also in Kenosha. That was the only two times we played in Kenosha probably ever. You know, we don't normally play there because the venues are more so... They're basically just like corner bars, you know? Yeah. Can I, but hey, I, got, so, I have to interject here, like, Two bands in my history that I worked with for Kenosha both have electric in their names. Electric Revolution and the Electric Hellfire Club. There you go. Oh, that's Kenosha. right. It's all electric. It's oh, all electric. I love it. I play the electric bass. <laughs> but Do yeah, you I, know those guys? Or are you... He knew... Um, I know it's Shane. I knew Shane and yeah. uh, Ronnie Vallejo was playing with them for a while. And I know Ronnie pretty well. Ronnie's actually. not well, according to what you told me, right? Yeah, I don't think he's doing too good these days, man. Sad you know? to hear uh, Rich Frost still lives there. Yeah. Keyboard probably. player. Um, yeah, I'd love. Thomas lives in Florida now, but uh, you know, I love the Electric Hall Fire Club. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> I was at the reunion concert. Back in the day wow. where you could use fire and Shane would light the Bible on fire on stage. <laughs> you know, when you could. <laughs> That's how you command some attention. Wow. Uh, he used to have a podium. And he, thanks to Great White. Or, <clears throat> That's not even Great White's fault, it's the venue's fault. Yeah, right. <coughs> too that, small. That, but now you can't like do much pyro on stage. You can't. Anymore. Yeah, it's, uh, everything's <coughs> fake. All the smoke, all, all the shit's fake nowadays. You know. Wait, do you? Unless uh, it's a live Do you know this guy? Um, another musician from up there named Rob Twardy. No, uh, he moved. He was in this band Mace in Pittsburgh for a while. Now he's back up. He's married to his. He lives new, in Kenosha. Yeah, beautiful wife Amy. They have a kid. Um, <clears throat> old friends. So the reason for this hat is um, Cassie, our beautiful Cassie. Filmographer, the video editor is up for being the max, the next Maxim cover girl. Oh, nice! And so when I met her, and I was saying this, yeah, you look. I'm gonna put this up every day. You can vote once a day, and, and vote. everybody listening, please vote. Please once vote. a day for we want her. Can yeah, you imagine see. having yeah, an MK yeah, Ultra Sound Girl being a Maxim cover girl? Be awesome. Yeah. So I, got, I met Cassie in 2012 at Exotica which is the porn convention. And she was scantily dressed. She had these little blue shorts on and pasties on her nipples. She was like 19, 18, 19, I think. And she was wearing one of these hats. So she got me this hat. She nice. gave me this hat. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and then I took her to the VIP area where she wasn't old enough to get into. <laughs> <laughs> she was at, Taking photographs at the Angel Show, right? That's yes. The first that's, time we saw it? You, yeah, okay. What happened with that was um, she was shooting, and Brock got her and gave her access to the upstairs. Upstairs, right. Shoot, I remember that. Which Did you have blonde hair that night? Okay, yeah. that's, yeah. <laughs> she. Um, that's where I could picture, you know. But was it? Thanks okay. to her and Brock is why you guys are Yeah, man. And then you wrote that piece on us and uh, the show and everything. On yeah, your, loved you guys. That was, yeah, crazy. So you, if you vote for her, it's MaximCoverGirl.com. I guess you go to Cassie. There's a, 
a Twitter thing here and a, a Facebook thing here, and I'm going to vote every day. I encourage all of you to vote every day. I'm going to remind vote. you every Please day, vote. every morning before I go to work, I'm going to post this thing. People are <laughs> sick of it. It's like, that's right. But yeah, it's our Cassie, and that's our girl. And some of these pictures are- You go, girl. <clears throat> they're kind of sexy, Cassie. Pretty sexy. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty nice. <laughs> Guitar players love her. <laughs> she All loves musicians. Dan, probably love Danny her. from um, Angel <laughs> loves her. Does Danny still call you? Uh-huh. <laughs> I actually oh. spoke to Danny yesterday on Facebook on the Messenger. I asked him to let Re- Electric Revolution uh, be their support act. I tried to get oh, that. God, so we'll man. see what happens oh, that'd here. Be great. That would. <laughs> yeah, he said he's going to talk to their their uh, booking agent actually. See if we can get in. There's one thing about Danny that, you know, he's pretty much running PR for them. He's the one who's a good friend of Punky. He's the one that totally made this whole thing happen, man, from ground up. He went and basically hunted Punky Meadows down. Yeah. You know, and found him and uh, brought him up, man. Said, you need to start playing again, man. And then, you know, the whole Facebook thing just blew up, you know. All their fans were on Facebook and he was like blown away and said, let's start playing again. Did you ever get to see them back in the day? Totally, man. Oh, I, I, didn't I seen I seen him with Alpine Mickey Valley. Jones. I seen him with Mickey Jones in Milwaukee at the Oriental Theater. Man. The original um, bass player, yeah, before man. Felix Robinson. That's when I loved them because they were more prog back then, yeah, heavier they, and prog. That's when I really liked them a lot. You know, um, Oriental Theater I, in um, Milwaukee, man. It was really good. Can we say Oriental? <laughs> uh, I wonder what they're called. <laughs> I'm still shopping. Is it still by in the Milwaukee? Way. I wonder if it's yes, still there. Is it still there? I think, I think it's still there. <laughs> the Asian theater is that Asian, what it's Asian's on? better. Asian <laughs> politically correct. I can't think of worse words. <laughs> I don't even call them that. Those people. <laughs> those them. Dude, I have yellow fever. I don't know if you listen to this show, but um, yeah, how's I, that I, I got to think for it. It's not that okay. one. Well, there's still plenty. Others. of plenty yes. of Orientals in the sea. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> She's too busy and I'm too fat. <laughs> oh. I know that you, busy is a terrible thing to be. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, easy there. <laughs> Can you feel I, I gotta take so Cassie's cute. picture down or this show might get you know, a little uh, go blue. Is, is that why the table's <laughs> rising over there? Oh no, that's that's me. <laughs> It's, it's Ty's clit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about? <laughs> I don't know, man. Ask me something. We'll talk about whatever you want, brother. I, I, I really want to do something for my for our birthdays. Yeah, and, that'd be... Um, we should I mean, we should, man. We Come, on. You know? I mean, uh, Come on. I think we have enough time we can set that up. And there, there's a great venue there that... um. I will approach the management about. I know the management. What are the odds, man? You I know? know that's weird. It is crazy, isn't it? Twelve, twelve, twelve. Three of us. Yeah. Fuck. Now we just got to dig up Frank Sinatra and, and and Flip Wilson and bring them with us. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm sure that Bruce Kulick from Kiss will come and Dave Manicotti will be right, there. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to talk about. We are recording a new album. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. See. Yep. Go We're for still, it, Leon. Do some new stuff because. Uh, now that I'm in the band and we're writing songs together, it seems to be great with Brock and with Dave and with Billy. We we just get together and music just happens. We wrote a new song in one day, man. What's and it called? Went out and play. What is it? The Crease. The Crease. Okay. Nice. You know what the Crease is, right? It feels like magic. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Camel toe. It, is, it is like magic, to yeah. be honest. No, it's, it's really super good, man. It turned out really well. It was I don't like doubt written it. in one night, man. When you, you know? have a bunch of guys together, they yeah. all are. You know, you, grooving and in the groove. You don't even know the song, but you know sense. where each other is and where they're going somehow. Yep. That's great, know? man. It, it just came together, great. man. You know, it's, I love that. The cool thing about him, so. him and I, you know, as being like a rhythm section, the foundation is really strong now yeah. because he likes to play in that low thing, man. You know, well, and, I can uh, tell you guys are friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we, with the with the last guy, it didn't seem like that he he was a buddy. To anybody, in the yeah, band. he had his moments, so but you know, he was just a strange dude sometimes, man. You know. Yeah. And we, I don't know, I don't want to talk about him, but anyway, we're not going to do that. Just, yeah. Thank God we got this guy, on. put it that way, man. You know, you know, it was great when, when you came in, they, they didn't even say that they were down a bass player. It just, next thing I know, here's this guy with no shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, I don't want to like break the news, you know, like, you know, yeah, that cause was great, no man. bad juju on, on social media or anything. I just you know wish the I mean? best for that so, guy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Do I. Good you know? man. We were yeah. getting texts. We were getting some 
you know, he was texting everyone. I had to like block him because he was ouch. You know, crazy. So, I do want to get uh, your singer in here though. <laughs> I want to do a show with him about yeah. politics. <laughs> Dave, you missed the show for politics. I'm sure you didn't want to talk about it. He's a huge Trump supporter. Yeah, I, I didn't know if he was just conservative or a Trump. He's a Trumper. Well, <laughs> all day he's got his right. He's got yeah, his beliefs. For that's sure. right. I won't put him up with our friends Lisa Lightning and Rich Experience though, because they're Bernie supporters. That would be war. <laughs> oh yeah, no. we, we'd lose the whole show to that. <laughs> I just got an uh, an email from Dan Milligan from um, Joythies who were here last week. He's not going to come to the cookout. Um, oh, you're missing out, bro. Hopefully, Matt Matthew Clark will be here. He's the guitar player and a good old friend of ours. And uh, Echo just posted that she likes a picture. Echo, um, hello, Echo, are you listening? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hello, Alex. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks for coming in. Yeah, um, man. We're going to hang out and have a couple of drinks here and some food. I've got tons of fucking food. I've, I've, got, I've got ribs. I've got chicken. I've got uh, pulled pork. I've got um, pulled chicken. I, I said that already. No, pulled chicken and pulled Let's pork. Let's pull that pulled, shit pulled out of the refrigerator thighs, and let's go. And um, we're going to do a spot, and I've got somebody in the house I, I have unfinished business with. We're going to hit this right now. Want a killer look without breaking your wallet? Try Killer Beards. All beard products are made with natural ingredients to stop beard dandruff and itching before it starts while giving you a smooth, silky beard that smells amazing. Choose from five amazing scents that will have everyone saying, Wow, that's a killer beard and it sure does smell good. Also available are shampoo and bars of rough cut soap. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Etsy at etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash killer beards. That's Killer Beards. Use the discount code MKUltra20 for 20% off. That's MKUltra20. Okay. Look, all of a sudden, here's Angela Dank. Hi. Thanks for having me back. Our second high. You just came Hi, for the food. I like it here, though. Our second highest rated show um, was hers, and then above yours was uh, Emily Seifert from down at Looney Bin Girl. Okay. The yeah. fashion designer who Not you her. met. Yeah, yeah. And um, thanks for coming because. We didn't get to touch on something I wanted to ask you about. We didn't. We um we went all over the place. We yeah, a lot. It was a good show though. It was. So I want to ask you. I, I when I went to your blog and what's the uh, how do you, how do how do we find your blog? So it's coffee or suicide. Um, you the best way to link to me is through Instagram. It's okay. Coffee dot or dot suicide, but that'll get you to the blog hosted on WordPress. Okay, you need to, you hear yourself fading in and out. Yeah, yeah sorry, weird. I'll stay right on. Okay. That. Um. So you posted a thing of you at Planned Parenthood I did. <laughs> that you yeah. went and uh -huh. had an um, an emergency STD test. I did. So what's yeah. what up with that? <laughs> so so um, that's how honest she is, by the way. I well, and that so that's part of my whole thing is like there are things we need to talk about. We covered a lot of the mental illness and that, but also just general well being, and that includes sexual health and. Um, I, I just think we need to start telling those stories. So I what think. happened? Why did you? Well, so you were, it was like, oh, God, I got to get STD tested. Well, yeah. No. So I had been having a thing with someone for a few months. Okay. And part of our thing was that we would use condoms with other people, but not with each other. And as our thing progressed, I started seeing he had like blackout drunk nights and so much cocaine going on. And um. I didn't trust anymore that kind That's not a good always, sign. Right, yes. right. Oh, so I cut off, I was as part of ending this relationship with shit, I have to go get checked out because I don't know what he's been doing because he doesn't always know what he's been doing. Ouch. Smart, very safe. smart. True. It's like, and I, people don't like to talk about that, but I, I think we have to. There's yeah, we do. Out there. And I'm more embarrassed to say I don't know my HIV status than to say I went to Planned Parenthood and got checked. I just That's went um, right after I read that. I had all my tests done, oh, like about good. a month ago. Yeah, when I, when I was thought I was going to be involved with that Oriental clean slate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a clean slate. I can't believe no. it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Ever. Me too, and I'm surprised by that. That's probably weird to say. Yeah, because well, good. That's you've, good. You've done some parties. Congratulations. I have. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and can I just? I'm going to kind of preach a tiny bit. I also. 
I think it's important to talk about Planned Parenthood, when we utilize it, how we utilize it, because they get smeared as the abortionists. Yeah, and, and that's it's not it. what they're about. Well, they do perform abortions, and personally, I'm fine with that, but that's not all they do. Right, um, but the misconception, the way the right is portraying them, is they're yes. baby killers. Right, they're baby killers, and that's it. That's the only reason you go to Planned Parenthood, and that's not true, and now money's on the table with it. Title X, yeah. funding's getting cut. So I think it's it's become even more important to say, I went there, this is why. Isn't it funny that a whoremonger is pushing this legislation through? <laughs> He's a fucking whoremonger. Fuck yeah. porn star. Totally, man. Yeah. I, 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 what a hypocrite. Yeah, right, absolutely. Man. Dave. <laughs> 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 so what else is new with you? So Angela came armed with these fucking, I wanted some restaurant nacho chips for the salsa that I made. She actually went to a restaurant and got them. Oh, I did nice. it well because she's the bomb. The good That's stuff. cool. You want the good chips with the good sauce. Yeah. There you go. Check this out and do one more break. I'm just a hired gun. Now's your chance to catch Pig Face live November 15th in Cleveland, Ohio, all the way through November 30th in Chicago, Illinois. For tickets and other information, go to martinatkins.bigcartel.com. Hurry, tickets are selling out quick. What a great album. So speaking of the pig face, um, our executive producer, Too Dark Mark Williams, is coming to town Wednesday. We're going to do a show next weekend. And I don't know who our guest is going to be, but boy, we have a fucking history to talk about. And um, and Cassie's going to be here. I think Cassie's going to be camping out for a couple of days. But it's going to be total fucking full-on gear, rock and roll show, stories, insanity. But um, is he one Mark... Mark Williams, oh, he's the guy who wrangles all this gear for us. He recorded last weekend with Martin Atkins. Martin Atkins went to Baton Rouge to his A Lab Media Studios and did some songs for his band, um, Naja. And we'll be playing those songs on debuting those. We'll be the first place to play them in the world. But yeah, Martin Atkins, Pig Face, played Nine Inch Nails, Killing Joke, PIO with Johnny Lydon, XX Pistols. So super good friend of the family here. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah. And um, we're going to have Jason Moit. Also, um, he's coming on the show with his new band. Yes, Cassie's smiling. <laughs> yes, yeah, my I friend. I know those guys. J- they're he, from he, Kenosha. Yeah, well, he used to be uh, in Emperors and Elephants. Right. Before that, Jason they had an industrial band. band called Monkeys with Handguns. And so Jason's got another band now, and he's going to come on, and we're going to have those guys on. I can't fucking wait, because he's a total rocker. They're a good band, dude. Uh, oh, Jason, yeah, he, he doesn't fuck around. He's, he's the real deal. Straddle and Rosie. Oh, yeah, that's, that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're a good band, too. Yeah, yeah. So have you played with them yet? There we go. Yet. There's my birthday show. There we go. That Fuck yeah. Great. That's... Actually, the vocalist, he was uh, he got recruited into, uh, was Kicking Valentina. Kicking Valentina, yeah. A little bit there. He's okay. from Kenosha and uh, did the gig with those guys when he lost his <laughs> vocalist. It was pretty cool. But, Cassie yeah. lit up when I said Jason White. You're going to love this guy. <laughs> we, um, we became friends because of Typo Negative. We were at the House of Blues for something. I was hanging out with some band or somewhat. He was in Monkeys with Handguns then and... He approached me. I think I was about my typo negative tattoo. Then he ended up getting a tramp, tamp, tramp stamp typo tattoo on his lower back. But yeah, big typo fans, and he's done a lot with typo negative and me, and 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 he also does video for Dean guitars. He also does uh, really engraving, engraving, laser yeah, engraving. Man. Oh yeah, like <laughs> all I, the band lots of his shit and stuff. Yeah, that Gene Simmons thing. It's around here somewhere. He made that. Yeah, and I've got mm-hmm. a lot of his art in his house. But, um, yeah. Well, I think that wraps it up. We did an hour nine. You guys are fucking fun. Awesome, awesome man. You listen yeah. to MK Ultra Pod and Soundcast. Uh, make sure you like us. Make sure you subscribe, and you can win uh, tickets to see Pig Face. You could uh, win a voodoo doll or a killer beard kit. And uh, we're going to be back before next Sunday with the next show with Two Dark Mark. Electric Revolution, fucking best rock and roll band I've heard forever. Ty Coon, it's good to have you back. Electric Revolution they, rocks. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. they love you in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> This girl's got the biggest tits I ever saw in my life, <laughs> and she loves you. So, yeah. Awesome. And then we're going to do uh, bass players topless. Uh, you guys aren't going to be able to see that, but we're going to eat, drink. We can do that and- photo shoot in just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'm Alexander. Talk to you soon. Peace. Yeah.
from the north end of the Mississippi River in Chicago, Illinois, to the south end in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, you've been listening to the MK Ultrasound Podcast with your host, Alexander, with our special videographer, Cassandra Belazic, and I'm your executive producer, Too Dark. Tune in for the next episode to see exactly what's going to happen next. You've been listening to the MK Ultrasound Podcast.